One of the most dramatic and unexpected events of World War II, was the collapse of France and the Low Countries in 1940. France was the most powerful military power in the world at the time. Britain, its ally, was the largest naval force. Both had greater economies than Germany, and could draw resources from the world's most powerful empires. Yet, the Germans defeated France, Britain, Belgium, and the Netherlands in a short campaign. The defeat of this formidable army, in under six weeks in 1940, stands as one of the most remarkable military campaigns in history. Following the heavy casualties in the First World War for France, around 40% of the active male population, the French military rejected the concept of improvised, unplanned offensives. They intended to stay on the defensive in Western Europe, while mobilizing their military forces and industrial base in preparation for a total war. They expected to launch the offensive two to three years after hostilities began. During the 1930s, the French constructed the Maginot Line, a series of fortifications along the German border. The line was intended to save manpower, by diverting a German invasion beyond the Franco-German border into Belgium, where it could be confronted by the French army's strongest divisions. The war would be fought outside of French territory, avoiding the destruction of the First World War. The main stretch of the Maginot Line ran from the Swiss border to Longwy, with the hills and woods of the Ardennes region, supposed to cover the area to the north. The Ardennes Forest and the Meuse River, according to French military authorities, were impenetrable and a death trap for any attacking force. In general, the slow-paced, attritional fighting of World War I heavily influenced French military strategy at the onset of World War II. Following the German invasion of Poland on September 3, 1939, France declared war on Germany. They launched the Limited Saar Offensive in early September 1939, and had withdrew to their starting positions by mid-October. Hitler was keen to follow up his triumph over Poland in 1939 with an invasion in the West, but bad weather forced the planned offensive to be postponed. The invasion finally began on May 10, 1940, with German air raids on Belgium and Holland, followed by parachute drops and ground troops operations. The British and French had responded to the initial offensive, by implementing a plan to push to the River Dial in Belgium. The Allies pushed their strongest forces into Belgium, including the British. The two opposing armies were nearly equal in troop numbers and divisions. The French and British forces had nearly a 3 to 2 advantage in the number of tanks, and a 2 to 1 advantage in guns. However, the Germans had a significant advantage in the number of aircraft. Light Panzer II, and even lighter Panzer I tanks, made up the bulk of the German tank force. The German army lacked a heavy tank like the French Char B1. French tanks were better designs, more numerous and with superior armor and armament, but slower, and with inferior mechanical reliability than the German designs. The German army had equipped radios in all of its tanks, allowing for greater command control during battle. In comparison, just 80% of French tanks were equipped with radios, The initial plans were for an invasion through the Low Countries, Case Yellow, similar to the German Schlieffen Plan of 1914. However, the German invasion preparations were compromised, and they switched to the Manstein Plan, which involved a deep armored drive through the Ardennes, which the French believed impassable by armor. By marching into the Low Countries, the Allies quickly demonstrated that they were dancing to Hitler's tune. 
The first German forces emerged from the Ardennes near Sedan, on the Meuse River, on the 13th of May. Though the German forces in the north faced stiff resistance from the French and Belgians, the main German thrust through the Ardennes was a huge success. The French second-rate divisions in the area were not prepared or equipped to deal with the major armored thrust that developed, and they were hammered by relentless German bomber attacks. Despite surprisingly tough resistance from the French defenders, and near suicidal Allied air attacks, the Panzers crossed the river in a two-day battle. France was militarily organized to refight World War I, and had dispersed its tanks across the army to support the infantry, allowing weaker German tanks which were massed, to repeatedly overpower small groupings of French armor. The German panzers broke out of their bridgehead under the command of General Heinz Guderian, a pioneer of armored warfare. They started racing towards the Channel coast, aided by the German fighter planes that commanded the skies. The British Expeditionary Force, along with the best units of the French Army, were still in the north and had seen little fighting. However, the German breakthrough to the south prompted them to retreat quickly, to avoid being cut off with their backs to the sea. With German forces pressing through Belgium, and panzers looping up from the south and west, the Allies were trapped. On May 28, the Belgian army surrendered, creating a huge hole in the Allied forces' British flank. German tactics were not just modern, but also aggressive. The panzer units took full advantage of deep penetrations, causing great chaos in the French army, which had never experienced losing communication lines before. The deep penetrations could have been easily destroyed by French forces, but they were not, owing to broken lines of communication and senior command's inability to make decisions. The Allied High Command appeared paralyzed. On May 20, German tanks arrived at Amiens, essentially trapping the British, who fled to Dunkirk in the hope of escaping to England. Mutual distrust plagued the Allies, with the French bemoaning Britain's decision to remove the RAF from France, and the British believing the French lacked the resolve to fight. Between May 26 and June 4, a hastily organized maritime evacuation, codenamed Operation Dynamo, rescued 338,000 Allied troops from Dunkirk. The Germans swung southwards on June 5, and the French resistance ultimately collapsed, though not without a fight. On the 10th of June, Italy entered the war on Germany's side. Four days later, Paris, the French capital fell, provoking the flight of the French government to Bordeaux. The surrender of France on June 22, marked the end of the battle. Hitler insisted on signing the surrender document, in the same railway carriage used when Germany surrendered in 1918. The humiliation of France was complete. The collapse of France was both sudden and unexpected. It upended Europe's power balance, and rendered the strategic assumptions on which Britain had prepared to defeat Hitler, obsolete overnight. Historians attribute the French defeat, on low morale and a divided pre-war society. This may be true, but the Germans were a far superior military force, although not in numbers. The Germans were more disciplined, better trained, and had recent combat experience in Poland, whereas the French army was completely untested and led by World War I generals who were past retirement age. 
The Germans made better use of their mechanization and maneuverability, and they benefited from air superiority. German military doctrine was more advanced, and German commanders handled high-tempo operations far better than their Allied counterparts. The French were totally unprepared for the German plan of attack. However, the risky Blitzkrieg strategy's success, led the Germans to bet even more heavily on their next big operation, the invasion of Russia. But, the gamble backfired this time, with catastrophic implications for the Nazi regime. If you have enjoyed the video, please subscribe and support the channel for more. Many thanks for watching.